All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us for today's program, which I'm calling Using LinkedIn as a Search Engine for Job Seekers. So today we're going to learn how to search LinkedIn, not only for jobs, but to find relevant job specs, events, and even similar profiles. We'll also discover how to search within companies on LinkedIn to find resources there. And this is all led by Kenneth Lang, who's the co-founder of My Networking Central, which is a searchable database for networking events and speakers. He regularly facilitates job search and networking events where he discusses LinkedIn best practices. Uh, Ken also serves as a brand specialist for Lee uh, Hecht Harrison, an outplacement service. Sorry if I mispronounced any of that. Uh, I again want to thank the Friends of the Library for sponsoring. So all oh, nearly 70 of us who are watching live and the many more that will watch the recording, let's give a big virtual round of applause to Ken for joining us this afternoon. And Ken, you can take it away. Thanks so much. Thank you very much, Robert and Tewksbury Library for having me here. Um, I will be doing the presentation, but one of my goals with the presentation is to go to LinkedIn right afterward and maybe answer questions you have that you post in the chat and do some demos because I find presentations are okay, but it's a lot better to do this as a visual thing as much as anything else. And I don't know what the best practice is here, Robert. A lot of times I suggest people put their LinkedIn profiles in the chat perhaps. So that later on you can save the chat and also connect with people in the chat. And um, just as a starting point for me, um, even though I'm in New Jersey, I'm a Boston Red Sox fan, go Blue Sox. Uh, have been to Fenway many, many times. My son lives in Cambridge, so don't hold everything else against me. So I'm going to actually go to the presentation now. And uh, Robert, if you can just monitor the chat, that would be great. So no technical difficulties, hopefully, and away we go. So I'm going to be talking about a lot of different things. And I'm going to take this, since I don't exactly know the, the specific level of using LinkedIn. I'm trying to cover all different things with the presentation, but any questions you have, definitely um, post in the chat or ask later on. So I'm going to start with basics. On LinkedIn, you need to have a picture and a background image. Picture is important and a background image because it also markets you. And so many people use that blank area there as the um, kind of the, the fallback, but you have an opportunity to market yourself with anything and everything. You want to have a headline that defines you. So many people I know use their last job or they just talk about, I'm looking for a job. This is a marketing thing. You have 220 characters to make sure the world knows exactly what you want to do. Same with the about section. And I'm going to show you some examples of this as we go through the presentation. Same with the jobs and descriptions and skills. And above all, the need to engage. So, so these are just basic high level things. And I will say this caveat right off the bat. You're not going to get everything down right off the bat. LinkedIn is a living document. You can take as much time or as little time as you need. So I like to start out with some of the top questions I get all the time. And I say all the time, whether I'm in person or not. Basic or premium does having one affect search results. And I'll give you the answers on the next slide. Should I put open work on or off? Why isn't anyone finding me? Why should I post when no one engages and how do I get started here? So my answers to this are this. It makes no difference if you do basic or premium. Open to work is probably one of the biggest questions I get again and again. It will not hurt to put it on, but you have to do more than putting that open to work frame on. There's different schools of thought. My thinking is it doesn't hurt, but it's not enough. But if you talk to five of us, you'll get seven or eight different answers. So again, this is just my take from my experience. The other question I get a lot is why isn't any, anyone finding me? All it takes is one person. This is not a quality. This is not a quantity thing. It's a quality thing. And why should I post when no one engages? And my answer is why not? Um, you've got nothing to lose. You have just as much experience and relevance as anyone else out there. And you have to just do it. I am an introvert by nature. It was It's very scary for me. It was the first time to think that I should post something on a platform with a billion users. But guess what? You have as much to say as anyone else. The things about a pack, picture and an image. The first bullet point is something I had never really thought about before. But you want to make sure you're smiling in the picture and your picture is centered. You don't want to do work with someone who just um, has an angry face or have an image which doesn't show who you are. And I understand with age discrimination, people are kind of afraid to put themselves out there. 
but you have to put things, you know, and headstrong about it. You are who you are. And uploading an image to market yourself. And again, there's a lot of tools out there, whether it's Canva, LinkedIn even gives you some background images. Very important to make sure you let people know not just what you want to do, but also the fact that you understand the technology. And then using the pronunciation feature, which is something is, that's on mobile, you can actually do a 10 second intro. And it's not just about pronunciation, it's about a quick pitch as to why people would want to connect with you. And just to let the group know, if you have any questions after this, or Robert, if I don't get to something, you know, people can always follow, follow up with me or the library, and I'm happy to share some of the best practices and links, because in an hour, it's going to be challenging to try to get through everything. So alluding to the headline, the second thing, if you're not sure what to do, I would search for jobs you're interested in, check out the skills associated with them and add some of them, or even do a search for someone in your industry. Let's say you want to be a project, a product manager. Do a search for product manager amongst the people on LinkedIn and find out why they're showing up where they are. You sometimes can get a lot of hints just by doing searching. And you can break it down even further by uh, industry and location. And when I allude to open to work, you can set up all these different job preferences as to what you want to do. Now, these are titles that I have. You can do as many or as few as you want. You can also do whether it's hybrid, remote, or on-site. And this is this part here is behind the scenes as well. And locations. It doesn't just have to be one location. One of the challenges that people have is they put down their hometown, but they don't necessarily put down a metropolitan area. And that could impact your searchability. So even though I'm in Wayne, New Jersey, I put on my profile New York City metropolitan area. And that's just to give me better, bigger exposure. So this is an example of mine, my headline here, it's what I am. I'm an empathetic job search mentor. Um, uh, I mentioned what I do, I mentioned, and that the second part, last part there, I'm always learning on always positive. Now I put the Giants thing on there and I probably should have taken it off after today because I'm gonna get a lot of razzing and we have not a happy place now, but it is who I am. So it's just showing you more than just about who I am it's about what I do. And if you look at the background image, I set that up as well on Canva. It's free. This just is part of my brand. It just shows who I am. It's another way that people can understand me. So in the about section, I see so many people here pretty much just using the resume, three or four lines and do a cut and paste. You can put down the about section, but I want to get people's attention. So I put down the about section, something to really get their attention. I also like to put my email address in there right off the bat, because again, if we're not first connections, I'll have no way of getting a hold of you. And again, I always suggest people go to other people's profiles on LinkedIn, just to get an idea about what's there. Um, and then what has just recently come out is you can add your skills here. And if you add your skills here, they will show up within the about section at the top. And that's all not only searchable, but it's another way to sell yourself. And the top skills are whatever you deem them to be. So when you go to your about section and you edit it, you will have skills. If you don't have any skills there yet, you'll have a thing that says add skills. I can take away a skill and add a skill. But when you do that, what ends up happening is it goes back onto here. And that's a great thing to do. You can also add skills, and this is also about the searchability, within each job. So if this is a job, and again, you have the pencil, which, which stands for edit on there, you would then select the pencil, and then you would go into the skills section, and then you have all these different skills here. Now, first of all, introvert no more is not a skill per se, but it's a skill that I add. And you can also create your own skills. It doesn't have to be LinkedIn's 100 skills. It's part of my brand. And I see a lot of people do that. It's not searchable per se, but it's part of a brand. It's something, again, if you have 100 skills, why not take advantage of them? So just to show you back on the pencil, if I select business analytics here with this pencil, it's going to say, where do you want to put that skill to use? And the drop down is going to be from all of my jobs. So I can put this on any one of my jobs. Now, your profile is going to be a little bit different, obviously, but if you select it there and then you save it, it then shows up within each job. And it's a great tool to have. And most people don't take advantage of it. And some people may not even be aware of it. But again, this is all about searchability. 
and I haven't even talked yet about the searchability for job specs or for people. So when I do talk about the platform as a job search tool, think about it from the perspective of instead of Googling someone, you're actually LinkedIn-ing someone. And I don't think people realize the benefits. So as an example, you can type a keyword at the top, whatever the keyword is. You can type layoffs, you can type project manager, you can type open to work, whatever you do. And then if you look underneath here, there are all these different levels of what you can search by. So if you just search for layoffs, you're gonna get, I did a search for posts and I got a search for posts that had the word layoffs in there. And I can do all these different searches after that. I can do a sort by when it came out. I can do a sort, sort by all those things. I'm just showing you this as one example of a search and it's just using a word, whatever the word is. So again, if I wanted to do something within posts, I can do it by the last 24 hours or the last week or last month. I like to recommend either the last 24 hours or the last week. Again, it all depends, but this is from that standpoint here, you can also do a search by a person's name. So if you do a search by post and you add my name there, you'll find posts I did with layoffs. Um, this is just something to really, really think about. It's a starting point. Another way to do this is if I go to project manager, I'm just gonna type project manager. And I'm gonna, first of all, find people that have the title in there. And I could break it down by first, second, third, and the like. But what I really like as well is you can filter this even more. When you go over here, there's all different things here. You can fil filter it by jobs. You can filter it by other things. And this is what I wanted to really emphasize. You can search within a company. You can search for employees. You can do searches for industry. You can review connection requests and invite. So again, I'm going to go through this when we actually go to LinkedIn itself to show in real time. But this is a tool that I do as kind of like a cool sort of thing. If you do a search for the words we're hiring or I'm hiring, anyone who has these keywords will show up. And I don't recommend you do it for 35,000, but you can break it down by we're hiring, by locations and by company. It's a keyword search. It's what I love about this platform. It's the fact that you can search for all different things. Now, what I said before with people, you can do it by location. You can also do it by, I did people in New York City metropolitan area. And now I wanna do a people search by all filters. And there are different industries that come up. So if I do a specific industry, or maybe if I do it by experience level, like account manager, experience level. I can do it by experience level and I'm gonna get job titles that match the experience level. And as I say in my groups, it's not about applying for the job. It's about getting an idea as to what the job entails and what do I have on my resume or what do I have on my LinkedIn profile that will be relevant. So as example, I did account manager jobs, mid senior level. And then I look at different jobs here and I will call the jobs up. And I will say, hmm, do I have that? Do I have that requirement? Do I have that description? I do, but it's not on my profile or not on my LinkedIn. So then my question, and I would say this all the time to my people, Leah Harrison, why isn't it there? It's there because you probably don't realize the accomplishments that you have done that relate to the job. So you can even go even further. You can filter within an industry within a job title. You can go to town with this. And I recommend you do this sort of thing. When you have time to do it, LinkedIn is like anything else. I don't spend hours upon hours on here. I try to be very specific on what I want to do. And I think the mistake a lot of people make doing job search or networking online is they spend so much time and they're not sure what the focus is going to be. So as an example, another way to search it, I do the search for when the last 24 hours a job was posted. And I'm going to stop here and say this. You don't apply for a job on LinkedIn. That's not a beneficial thing. You're much better off looking at the job, finding a company, someone at the company, and then connecting with them there because you're going to go into the same black hole that a lot of people go through. It's just a different black hole because when a recruiter gets this, and I've actually asked recruiters about this, 
they get a list of all the people that have applied, whether it's from LinkedIn or online. And it's very hard for them, unless they have a recruiter seat, which costs tens of thousands of dollars to really know who the best people are. And as I said before, your goal is, is not necessarily to apply for the job, but to confirm you have the qualifications for it. And that's a bit of a, not so much a disconnect, but it's a different type of thinking to think that way. The other thing I absolutely recommend, and this is a change I've probably made the last year or so, when you get an accepted request, don't follow up right away. Give it a day or so. When I say don't be salesy, don't market yourself, don't tell yourself how, how, how great you are and tell, don't tell them I need a job right away. Just give it some time to really just sit because I'll give you my perspective. I get requests all the time and I will connect with people and I will get something which we call in our industry a pitch slap, which is right away I'm getting sales. I'm getting called on to sales. Let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. Just give it some time. I'm not suggesting not to do it, but I'm saying just think about it from the other side, from that perspective. So just some other changes. And then I really want to spend some time on LinkedIn too, because it's a visual thing. LinkedIn has personalized connection requests to those who have basic. It is probably one of the worst things LinkedIn have ever done. And I recognize it as a monetary thing. I don't have to agree with it. I think it is so against what the platform stands for. So you really need to come up with other ways around that. And personalized connection requests, and I'll be honest, I don't get as many as I did before, but I have much more um, support and empathy if I get don't get them because I know that people are limited. So you really want to trust that you have a relevant profile that way. And you can personalize some, but there are better ways to do it than that. You also have the ability to schedule posts. For those that really don't like to engage or don't think they have anything to say, but they're not sure when they want to say it. When you create a post, there is this clock on the bottom. Sorry about where I put that. And then you can schedule the post. And as you can tell, this is a very old slide, but it's still very relevant. You schedule the post when you want to run it in the future. And then after that, it is set to go. The other thing is, and this is what LinkedIn's first attempt was to make sure people are real on this platform because there are so many that aren't. When you go to the more on anyone's profile, there's a thing that's called about this profile. Everyone has that. And it tells you who the person is. And usually someone who's just created a profile in the last day or so or the last month or so, if they don't have a big, uh, a big or good profile, it gives me the first idea that they're not a real person. It's not a fail safe and all, but it's a starting point. Now, everyone has talked about AI artificial intelligence. It is now being rolled out to everyone. It is all over. When you do a post on LinkedIn, it suggests other things, it suggests other people. It is suggesting now people create their headline, create their about section. I actually tried it and it's not pre me anymore. And I will tell you this, it's better than nothing, but it's not that good. You're much better off trying to do something on your own. And I do recommend, and I know this is not so much part of this presentation, go on to AI, go on to ChatGPT, go on to all the other platforms and get some answers to the questions because you have the ability to really get a lot of information there. So this was the headline that AI did for me. It basically took some of my information and that's better than nothing, but it's not what I want to do. But again, it may give you a starting point and you can change your profile as many times as you want to. The network is not gonna know that anymore. The default is that people will not know every change you make. You now have to let the network know if you want them to know that you've made a change. And again, settings is a whole different can of worms. So again, this was an example of the about section that way. And it took content that I had and it created it. It is, again, better than nothing. Um, it's The thing about AI is it's not in your voice. And you want it to be from your voice. And it needs to be in different people of different voices. But again, I always recommend trying things out. And you could even 
you could even go into AI uh, and chat GPT and say, I'm an IT project manager. What would you suggest for an about section or any tool like that? And you'll get some ideas because a lot of people just don't know where to start. So before I go to LinkedIn itself, these are just some general reminders. You need to have a picture. You're more than 20 times likely to be viewed if you have a picture. And there's a difference between being searched for and being viewed. Background picture, another way to market yourself. And engaging on LinkedIn will help you get noticed as a subject matter expert, which is a term. I will say this. If you lose your job, you haven't lost your experience. And no one has to know that. LinkedIn is above all very much keyword driven and keyword in many different ways possible. You know, you can probably spend a year and still not know everything about LinkedIn. I've been on the platform now probably 17 years. I still don't know everything. And I ask people all the time. So, Robert, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the presentation now and I'm going to go back to LinkedIn and I'm going to see if people have questions or if not. Like I said, I'm very happy to just do the demos. But I hope that this part, I wanted to give as much time as possible to the group, because I know you, you know, I didn't want it to necessarily be 45 minutes of Ken jabbering away because, you know, we know how that can be. Sure. No, that's fine. So folks, if you have any questions for Ken, you can type them into the chat or type them into the Q&A. Uh, and we already have about three or four uh, in the chat. Um, Kim asks, uh, hi, does the recruiter dashboard of LinkedIn indicate a candidate's likelihood of replying or responding to an in-mail? If so, I'll reply uh, to more in-mail nonsense. All right, give me a second um, sure. to share the screen because I want to do a demo of this and technology being technology. I've got too many windows open up now. Okay, so I'm opening up LinkedIn now. And what was the question again? Yeah, so on the dashboard, on the recruiter dashboard, okay. does, it does it indicate a candidate's likelihood of replying or responding to an in-mail? Uh, that, that's really Kim's question. Um, the recruiter dashboard, it doesn't have anything specific in terms of the percentage of people that are going to apply back. But here's the thing. Recruiters use LinkedIn all different ways. And the most important thing to think about from the recruiter dashboard is that they are seeing things that you won't be aware of unless you have a relevant profile. Okay, they can do searches, they can do Boolean searches, they can do searches. And, and a little thing I talk about too, is if you don't put in your platform that you're available for remote opportunities, you just put it within the settings, people aren't gonna know that. If you don't tell people you're not available for hybrid. Um, in mails are not the preferred way. Recruiters can take advantage of them, but recruiters, it's almost like throwing spaghetti against the wall. They're gonna send it out to lots of people. The best recruiters out there are the ones that really use LinkedIn as more than just the in-mails. And again, there's a whole different discussion as to what different recruiters are. The people that have the seat are paying thousands upon thousands of dollars. And it's usually through a company. A lot of the recruiters that are on here are just like you and me, Robert. They may not even have premium accounts. So they're just taking advantage of as much as they can. So I hope that answers the question a little bit. Uh, John asks, do I need to verify my LinkedIn account? No, you don't need to. A lot of us do it because we just feel it's an appropriate thing. And that's not that's not even the same as, uh, as having an account verified with a work email address. It's not a requirement per se, but again, LinkedIn is doing it as much as it can to, to deal with all the, the the chats on there and the bots and things like that. And it's a losing, it's a losing battle. But, and, and so we all do the best we can. I'm very upfront with what I do and say, because I've got nothing to hide. A lot of people, and I'm probably, I'm going to share now as a perfect example, as long as we're out of here. I'm, I'm now going to go to, to my, um, my spam folder. So this is my spam folder. And this is an example of something here as spam. Companies like yours partner with us to plant trees for each new client or product sold for just a pound a tree or whatever. And I get these all the time. And I just make a decision to block them and hide them because I don't want to see them. And that's for me as a sales perspective. Um, again, I if I'm going to LinkedIn as a job seeker, 
So Robert, why don't I ask you? And listen, are there any other questions? I'm because otherwise, uh, I'm well, there's, there's, there's a few more, but um, so it's up to you, Ken. I don't want you to lose your train. No, of no, no, no. I'm I'm ready. I'm I'm at your sure. disposal for the next half hour. Yeah. So Brenda asks, and I know you referenced this earlier, is paying for premium worth it? I find it doesn't seem to help. No, it isn't. I mean, you can get the free PME pre, you can get the free for a month. And you have to be careful after that, you don't get charged. One of the other hints is after the month is ending, you just threaten to cancel and they may give you a second month. But everything I'm showing you here today is available on basic and premium. For me, it's more relevant because I do these presentations and I get these conversations all the time. And also because I'm grandfathered into a cost that most people would never be paying anymore. And if LinkedIn ever caught on, they'd be making a lot more money for me. So um, no, the, the short answer is no, whether it's a job seeker or not. Uh, Bill writes, uh, hi, Ken. I routinely see jobs posted on LinkedIn reset the counter posted eight, nine, 10 days ago. Then a few days later, the counter is reset to one, two, three days ago. What do you think is going on there? I think LinkedIn is always broken and LinkedIn is constantly changing. I think, the, and I'm gonna show you something which frustrates me about, about LinkedIn in general. And I'm gonna call up a job for no specific, just any job. When you go to a job like this and you go at the bottom, Um, here, it says applicants for the job. Those are not the number of people that have applied for the job. It's the number of people that have viewed the job. We have been trying to get LinkedIn for the longest time to change that wording. It's not the people that have actually gotten through to the site. It's LinkedIn. And that's a very big misnomer. And we know that that's the case because it's been verified. So that's a definite thing. So if you see a thousand people have applied for a job, they're just viewing the job. A very and, important consideration. No, it really is. Cause uh, you know, you might get the misconception that there's a lot of competition for that job when in nope. fact, maybe there isn't. There may not be, but even so, yeah. I, there are better ways to do it, but that's a, a big thing to think about from the job search perspective. Numbers don't, even the idea of viewers and impressions, no one knows what an impression is. Like I'm, if I'm looking at a post, and I leave the post, is that an impression? Do I have to spend five seconds on it? Do I have to engage on the post? Numbers mean absolutely nothing to most of us. That's why I say all it takes is one person. Uh, Stephanie uh, writes, if I created two different profiles, one years ago and one more recent, with mm -hmm. two different email addresses, how do I merge them? Okay, the question I get quite a bit at Lee Hack Harrison because people have done that. There is, and I will share this with you, Robert, there is a link to a place where you can have LinkedIn merge the accounts. See, here's the thing, again, very few people know where this stuff is, unfortunately. But what I would recommend first is when you have two accounts, think about which is the account you want to merge into the other account. Because one account's gonna go away, the connections from that merged account will move over with the other one, but any content you have there is gonna be lost too. So, Short answer is this, and Robert, if you can give me a list of the questions after so I can answer them all with one follow-up thing, that might be easier too, because I I wish I could go back and forth to this and that, but this way it's gonna be a lot easier for me to kind of think it through, but ask the questions any way, shape or form. And I think it's important for people to know, we as career coaches on here are doing a lot of this because LinkedIn will not do it for you, unfortunately. Uh, and a anonymous attendee um, wanted to know um, if you're really a Red Sox fan, which I think uh, Ken did address at the very beginning. Uh, the I absolutely person am. I absolutely am. I was brought up. My favorite player was Carly Ostromsky. I, I started become a, becoming a fan at 66, 67. I've been to Fenway Park many times. I was there when Yaz's number was retired. Um, I go to Fenway two, three times a year. Um, I get it. I totally do. My son graduated from Northeastern Fenway Park. We have a challenge in our house, a big challenge in our house, because my wife's a Mets fan and she was there in 86, as was I. Not for the same game. Um, we hate the Yankees. So, yeah, I'm a total Red Sox fan. I'm actually yeah. connected, on Red, I'm connected on LinkedIn with Luis Tiant and Rico Petroselli, which I know probably dates me, but um, one of the coolest things I did. Yeah. 
Well, at least Mets fans and Red Sox fans have a mutual hatred of the Yankees. So we you got that going. Absolutely do. And we, oh my God. Uh, oh. So Bill, um, regarding connection requests, uh, Bill says that he sends an email and he includes his LinkedIn URL and asks, asks people to connect with him. So that way you're not uh, limited in the number of things you can send, but obviously you would need to know the person's email address. Well, the other thing which I do a lot of is if, if I'm, let's say you, Robert, you and I are first connections, hypothetically, and one of your people wants to connect with someone. So you and I might have a conversation and I might bring in your other first connection into a three-way conversation as an introduction. And then you could have your contact and then connect with me or someone else as that third party kind of like a group messaging sort of thing. And, and I, we do this all the time amongst ourselves. I think I would not be afraid to connect with anyone out there. Um, people do not block people from connecting for the most part. People understand this. Um, connect with people you want to know too. And the other workaround from this is if you go to someone's profile, you can actually follow them without connecting with them. That's an option. I can, I follow a lot of people. I mean, Rachel Wolf is a reporter for the Wall Street Journal. I follow her. Could I connect with her? Probably. But I, to be honest, I don't have, I mean, I'm getting her content this way the same way. Mm -hmm. So there's no benefit to me for doing that. But again, everyone has a different strategy. Gotcha. Um, let me see here. William says, you touched on this a little bit at the beginning, but maybe you can walk us through this, Ken. Uh, yeah. How do I say I'm looking for work and how should I note this on LinkedIn? All right. So hypothetically, there's two ways to do it. One way is I go to my profile here and in the about section, I have the ability to do, I could put in here that I'm looking for a job. Now, by the way, this is more about me. I love a bagel with cream cheese. Um, I'm a child of the seventies. I love the Beatles, Neil Diamond, Billy, Billy Joel. I mean, this has nothing to do with LinkedIn, but it's who I am. And I am a lifelong Red Sox fan. Um, so Again, I would put my email address in here, but I would put down, I'm actually going to do this in real time here. I'm going to say in here. Um, and again, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, um, so looking for work. Connect with me. At mail, dot, 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 dot. I mean, that's one way. You add that line there. That's one way around it. The other way around it is if you don't have a new position, and a lot of people do this as well, LinkedIn penalizes you if you have an old position and it's dated and you don't have a new position. So I always say to people, you want to create a position to get past the LinkedIn algorithm but you don't necessarily want to say I'm open to work. So I, again, what I might say as an example, I'm going to create experience here. I'm going to add experience. I'm going to add a position. So the title might be project manager because that's the title that I want. I want to be a project manager and I'm going to be self-employed because that way I don't have to give a company name, location type, whatever. And I'm going to say in here, I'm going to describe a bit about me. I'm looking for my next, I'll say forever job. It's a workaround. You're not you're not misrepresenting yourself. It's a current job. So my, I'm gonna call myself a project manager who's self-employed or whatever the job title is. I'm going to say, I'm going to talk about the description of here. What makes me a great project manager? What makes me, why would I want to, why would you want to hire me? I'm going to say, I'm looking for my next forever job. Let's connect. And it's a new job. It's kind of getting around the algorithm. And I can add, again, this is add skills here. So it's going to add skills here. Now, these are my skills as opposed to someone else's skills. So it's a workaround. So if someone, and we do this a lot, if you've lost your job, and I say you haven't lost your experience, that's one way around it. The other way around it is if you go, and I'm going to, there's a group out here that's called Great Career Networks. They're in Philly. They are actually a page of a lot of people looking for jobs. 
Most of the people in this group, so they, they create, they say they're a member of Great Career Networks, which is true, and they're volunteering. And that's another workaround. There are a lot of job search groups out here that have pages. It's just, a, and a lot of this is just a perception. And LinkedIn is a lot about perceptions. So, and you could actually, and I'm pretty sure if I type open to work, I'd probably find a company out there. So if I do open work and I do companies, there's an open to work company, open to work. I don't necessarily recommend you become a member of this company, but again, these are just other searchable things here. I mean, LinkedIn is a marketing tool above all. If I could say nothing else, you are marketing yourself. And it's not a, as one of my coaches says, it is not a binding document like a resume. A resume is a binding document. LinkedIn is a marketing tool. I'm not saying lie or misrepresent yourself, but it's a way for you to get in front of people. So if anyone, is there any other questions? Again, like I said, I don't want to. Uh... Yep, we got a few more questions. Uh, Lily asks, uh, and Lily, we're going to have a Zoom on this very topic in about a month. But mm -hmm. Lily asks, do you have any tips for determining what job postings might be fake or scams? I've applied to a okay. couple in the past that I've come to find out were basically pyramid schemes. Well, first of all, generally speaking, I don't believe in applying for jobs directly. I, I, I believe in reaching out to the company. The bigger issue for me, even more than the pyramid schemes, the jobs that are posted that are not jobs that they're hiring for. They're, they're jobs that companies are sourcing for. And you don't know that for sure. And that's a big thing that I wish LinkedIn would do a better job of. You may be applying for a job, but HR is looking for 60 or 70 resumes for a job they may not have for three months. And you don't know that. It's, it's a wild west out there. That's why when you do a search for jobs, my big belief is you do a search for a job, get an idea of the specs for the job. And then maybe like, again, if, if you go, if I look for a company and I hate when people say, do you know someone at Google or, or Meta? That is such an impossible thing. You want to find better companies and more relevant companies or find the five or 10 companies. The truth of the matter is this, the best way to get a job is to ask people for help and advice and support. Because a lot of us get jobs that we, we know of through our network. I don't, I think LinkedIn is, again, I'm just going to do this in real time. If I were to type product owner here, and again, it could be any job title in the world, and I'm going to do jobs, and I already have 2,000 results. Well, I want to do an experience level. So I'm going to do mid-senior, and I'm going to do an all filters. So I'm going to go product owner, and I'm going to do it by information technology and services and banking. You can do as many as few as you want. But now I'm saying these are product owners. So I'm going to look at a product owner job. And actively recruiting, it means that you're they're looking more, but I'm not even looking from that perspective. I'm saying now, look at the responsibilities. Have I done these things? If I've done these things, how have I done these things? Why have I done these things? You know, and it's, it's taking the information requirements. Have I done these? And you're looking at this to glean information. Maybe you'll apply for the job, maybe not. But that's why I recommend using it as a search engine that way. And again, you may also find that there's different job titles here. Product management team leader is not the same as a product owner. So you may want to tweak your resume with a different job title. Because a lot of times you get kicked out of the systems because you don't have the right job title. And I find that's just a valuable tool. And by the same token, if I do product owner and I'm going to look for people and I'm going to, again, since there's millions of people out there, I'm just going to look at first connections. I'm going to look at people and I can, I don't know ahead of time what's showing up. Person here without a background who is to work with, shame on him, shame on him. All right, here's an example here. Product, look at all the things he has here in his headline. These are all searchable terms. He has an image back here, so I know exactly what he does. No question about it. He's in product management. Then I go into here. Again, I didn't know before this, I'm, what I'm known for, what I want to do, connect with me. No, no question about it. 
And everyone here has something that they've done. And he has in here, connect with me. He has a link to a calendar. You want to have a conversation with me? Here's a link to my calendar. But he has in here, currently I'm focusing on opportunities. And you asked about this, Robert, about job search. What I want to do, this is what a job seeker would want to do. What I want to do as a job seeker, I want to do this. Currently I'm doing this. And he's putting this in because it's searchable. So everyone in your call can look at it from that perspective. And there's all different ways to do this. Again, like I said, I love the fact here, my curiosity and technical acumen enable me to seamlessly navigate all this. Constantly deliver high value. Go to town with it. No one is reading an about section per se, but they are definitely going to take advantage of the search. And all I did now is I did a search on product owner. I did first connections because of my network. And I tried to find, again, here's another one, senior product owner, Sa same thing. If you have certification, you want to put it in there. Same thing. Different skills here. Then there's no one right or wrong to this. Um, if you have, again, there's a whole thing with the featured section and the posts, but this is why I like, Robert, why I like to do these as a demo thing so you can really get a sense of where I'm coming from. Sure. Um, so are there other, other questions? Now, here's the other thing. If you don't have anything you want to post, I don't know where to start. Well, here's LinkedIn News. Beetlejuice crawls up the top spot. If you have seen Beetlejuice already, you could probably add a comment on one of those posts. Someone wrote about it already. So now, all these people are saying, you can box office, add a comment, be part of the discussion. 48 comments on this here. And who knows what they're saying. Just again, someone, it's just a way to, it's another way if you're afraid to post, go to existing content. I'm glad, Ken, I thought you were going to say Beetlejuice two more times. So I'm glad you did. <laughs> uh, so we do have some more questions in the sure. chat and the Q&A. Sure. Uh, so uh, G says, uh, recently, I was told from a career coach not to put years of experience if one has over 10 years in the workforce due to potentially being impacted by ageism. Do you mm -hmm. have an opinion on this? Absolutely. And I will say this, I will, if you go to my profile, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. I have on here, going back to my experience, going way, way, way back, 24 experiences. I go back to 1980. On here. go back to 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, no, 1981. And I don't care it's the same level because I'm not in IT and I'm not a developer anymore. But the reason you do this, like I worked at UPS a long time ago. You never know who's from UPS is on the site. Now, a resume is different. You put as much or as little as you want to on here. Now, from a resume perspective, and this is one of the best practices we say, Yes, you want to use less 10 to 15 years of experience and in going into relevant detail, but you want to have an area with, with previous work experience and just list the places you worked at without the dates because it's who you are. I've had so many people say to me, I did this 25 years ago, company A, and then you've taken it off the resume. And I said, well, if it's that relevant, put it at the top of your resume, like as an accomplishment or something, or at the top of your LinkedIn profile. But again, you can't change who you are. You know, I, I've connected with people. And once you leave a company, you never know who's on this profile on, on LinkedIn. So the short answer is resume, probably not to the same amount of detail. LinkedIn, absolutely not. You go as much as little as you want because you never know who's here. Uh, G also asks, you mentioned that LinkedIn penalizes if you don't have your current work listed. Yep. Do you mean that we don't come up in searches? What What is the penalty? It means that when you don't have a current job and a recruiter does a search, they will block out if you don't have a current job as part of their searching. They want to hire people. I mean, again, and it, you're not going to, whether you show up the same when the algorithm or not, 
you want to have a current job because from a job, from a recruiter perspective, despite what they say, they want someone who's working. Now, working doesn't have to be working at a company for 10, 15 years. I mean, you have to show that you're relevant. Look, if you're in school taking training classes, that's that's biz, that's experience. I'm not saying make something up. Too many people put their volunteer experience in the volunteer section and not at the top. Why not? No one has to know that. You can put that you're volunteering. They just want to know that you're doing something now. It's no shame to be out of work for as long as you're out of work. People, ever since ever since COVID, we've had that understanding. You know, I would never use a career break that LinkedIn suggests because that's not searchable, the word career break. But there are so many people out here, and I'm going to try to find someone now who is, let me see. All right. And the people I'm calling up now, basically, people have given me permission to uh, show their profile. So they don't, you don't have to worry about it. Rich Hackleman. Rich Hackleman is a friend of mine. Um, he just lost his job. And that's so what he says here now. My abilities, top skills. He will not, for whatever reason, change the job that's here. He's been out since July. I wish he would change it, but he doesn't want to because that's just the way he is. Um, it's affecting him in the search. Um, this person here has actually also been looking for a while, but she has decided to create this here. Software development, testing, and training consultant. In transition is, is what she has there. You can do that. And she has this here as a starting point. It's something. This is what her, this is what she wants to do. This is what she did. And it's a starting point. There's no one right or wrong way to do this. Everyone's situation is a little bit different. I'm trying to paint some basic broad strokes here about this. I mean, what you can also do is create a company page for yourself, which is the other thing. If you're if you're going to do this and you have a company page under for business, you can create a company page and it doesn't mean you have to be an LLC or something, but you can create a company page and you can call you can call yourself ABC Consulting, whatever it is. You can put the industry, the size, you can upload an image of whatever it is. And now you can say that you are now the company. I am now the, the, the owner of company ABCD. It's another workaround. Again, I'm not, none of these are going to be right for everyone, but I'm trying to give everyone a sense here as to things that they can do. All right. Brenda asks, do you recommend applying on the company's website instead of on LinkedIn? I apply, well, this is what I would say. If I'm going to look for a company, you apply on the website because you're going to have to apply on the website anyway. But what you want to do is, and I'm just going to call up, um, let me call up, uh, all right, I'm going to call up a company that I know probably doesn't have a lot of jobs on here. I'm going to call, you call up a company, whatever the company is. And there's a thing that's listed for people here. You're not going to apply for jobs, but I'm going to call up Crestron Electronics and I'm going to do a search for people. What I could, what I then want to do is go to the company, the current company, I'm going to narrow it down some more. And maybe I want to do under all filters. Maybe I want to do the industry. Maybe I want to do human resources. So now I have 19 people. Here's a VP global talent and culture at Crestron. This square means you can connect with him and send him a message. See, I might say to Alan or someone else, I just applied with this recruiter. I just applied for job A, B, C, D. Um, you know, I'd love to have a conversation with you. Or maybe even before that, you connect with this person, say, I'd love to learn more about your company. Even before I've applied, can you share with me some insights and why you like working there? Just kind of like that sort of thing. I mean, this is where the searching comes in. Or... You may find, and this is where I always recommend, again, I'm looking at a company and you can do this again and again and again. I'm now going to look at people at the company. And I want to find people at the company that I'm going to take out this space here. I have Crestron. And I'm going to look, do I have any first connections there? 
I do. So I can message that person. Or let's say someone wants to work at company A and they see that I'm a connection. So hypothetically, I would do a message and I might add another person there. And I might change this text over here to say, I have someone who's interested in working at your company. Would you be willing to have a conversation? That sort of thing. I mean, that's how, that's how, that's not to say you don't apply, but th these are just other workarounds. Now I know who Kendra is. I know who all these people are actually. And all I did is I did a search for the company and the people. I would stay away from Google and Meta and Amazon because there's just so much out there, but find your five or 10 target companies. You know, for locations, you can select anything. I mean, I'm a big, big component, a big believer of searching and commenting. And if you have nothing to say, you do start a post and you do create a poll. You ask the, you ask the network a question. What is your biggest challenge in job search? One, two, three, four, five. Create a poll and let people respond to it. And that's another way to get engagement. I mean, these are like, I actually asked this question last week. I'm going to do another thing about it um, later on because I wanted to do this as a, as a work exercise for myself. And I'm sharing it now because it's probably very relevant. So this is what I did a while ago. I believe, why don't you think many recruiters get back to you with the status of your application? And this is what I got. It was a poll. And I'm going to ask the same question of recruiters tomorrow, the opposite. I just wanted to get a sense of things because it'll help me understand. And people started to ask, putting comments in. And all you're doing is you're, you're getting engagement. So here, most recruiters I know are overly willing. It's not going to make you feel, it, it may not help you in a certain sense of the word, but it will give you some ideas to what the mindset is. It may not get you a job quicker, but you may not feel as alone. You know, you connect with everyone here, reach out to us. We are all willing and able to help. We just want to know how we can help besides find a job. I mean, and it's, it's not easy. I'm not going to suggest it is. And one of the reasons I wanted to have the conversation today is using LinkedIn as a starting point. All the different things you can do, and there'll be five or six or 10 of us that will tell you different aspects of LinkedIn. So, I mean, I'm going to save the chat off to the side now, and I will never reach out to any of you guys. That is not my place. It is not a marketing thing. I'm here to pay it forward. And if you connect with me, that's great. It's not a requirement. I, I mentioned that because a lot of people do that, Robert. I want to be respectful. I'll send things to you if you want to send things to your group. That's absolutely up to you. Yeah, no, it's great. So, Ken, a wonderful job. Sure. Uh, we, we only didn't get to a couple of questions, which I can forward along to you afterwards. Uh, I'll also include that question about, you know, where's the directions on how to merge the... Yeah, yeah, the, the, it's, the it's a link that I can get to right yeah. away because someone actually asked the question because you actually have to open a support ticket, which no one knows how to do on the support ticket. And then you get, and then you can actually, you may have to send them screenshots of the two profiles because they, they're not going to know. And yeah. due to privacy concerns, they can't look into it unless you give them permission. There's a nice comment from Sandy. It says, I make it a point to post on LinkedIn at least once a week. It's uh, If it's career oriented, I'll post it to a group for that industry as opposed to a general post. And I usually get a lot of response. Last week, there were uh, 1,600 impressions. And then you can, and you should tag people on the posts. Tag people, all of you that are in this session today, if you know each other, tag each other because then you can engage on each other's posts. Yeah. So folks, um, let's give Kenneth a big virtual round of applause for a great presentation. Uh, make sure to take 60 seconds and fill out that feedback uh, survey that pops up when we exit the Zoom in a minute. Uh, look for an email for me tomorrow with a link to the recording. I'll also include the uh, saved uh, chat. I'll also include Ken's uh, LinkedIn profile in case folks want to connect with him there. And I don't know if you'll necessarily have the answers by tomorrow, but I, I will uh, eventually get you answers to the questions that um, weren't uh, asked uh, today. So I will get those to you at some point soon. Uh, and uh, another reminder is uh, every other Wednesday morning from 9.30 to 11.30, uh, we have a 50 plus job seekers networking group uh, facilitated by professional career coach, Debbie Hope. Uh, so we're off this Wednesday, but we'll be back at it next Wednesday. And that information will be in the email as well. Uh, so thank you all so, so much. Uh, Ken, any last words? Are the Red uh, Sox going to make the playoffs, Ken? 
Well, if they're not, as long as the Yankees get out right away, I'll be a happy camper. Uh, loving the Yankee drama here in New York. Love it, love it, love it. Love seeing I'm, Severus. I'm love sorry, seeing... I'm, I'm sorry your Giants aren't doing so hot. Well, here's so. the thing. We've we've learned to deal with it. Um, I will share something here, which will not go over too well in the group. But we actually, my, my kids and I went to Patriots training camp the year after the Giants beat the Patriots in the Super Bowl. And we got kicked out of Patriots training camp for wearing our Giants jerseys. <laughs> Yeah, we, we were still – that one still stings to this day. And that David Tyree ridiculous catch. Which never um, should have been – passion never have been thrown, first of all. That's Eli Manning. Yeah, that's Eli Manning. Oh, boy. Well, anyway, uh, Ken, uh, sorry to end on that note, but uh, but thank you all sure. so, so much. Uh, thank you, Ken, and I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their week. Thanks and again. Don't, and don't be afraid to reach out to me, even if it's just to ask a question. I mean, I may not get back to you that next second, but I will get back to you, and I promise I will not sell. I say that because I just feel that need to do that because so many job seekers are used to being sold. Here's a here's a resume thing. Here's a this thing. Pay me for career coaching. That is absolutely not my intention. Never was, never will be. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the clarification, Ken. Yeah. I, I'm sure some folks will absolutely connect with you. Sure. Uh, thanks for the great presentation. And I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their week. Have a great week, everyone. Right. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye.